folks Rick here I'm back with another video and I'm here to do an unboxing of the Samsung S20 FE which stands for fan edition 5g now I wasn't anticipating doing a video on this phone I wasn't even gonna purchase it but I had some uh, some issues some quirks with the uh, OnePlus 8T I'm looking for a secondary phone a backup phone and I decided while I'm still in the buyer's remorse window let me try the S20 FE 5g so with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the box. So if you notice this box is a little bit different from the other uh, S20 branded uh, boxes. They're usually black with silver letters or something of that sort, uh, usually black boxes. And it has uh, these fun little emojis all over the box. I don't know if you could pick that up on the camera. This is uh, the white variant, which is only offered online by Samsung. For some reason, the carriers are not uh, carrying the white variant and the orange variant. I was kind of tied between the white and the orange. You know, I typically love to go with white phones. I think it looks clean uh, and crisp, and I, and I like that. But uh, the orange color was really, was really calling me, but I figured the white variant was going to stand the test of time. I might like the orange for a little bit and then maybe not like it as much later on. So... I decided to go with the tried and true white variant of the Samsung S20 FE. So with that being said, I purchased this direct from Samsung. I knew when uh, this phone first came out for pre-order, I really wasn't interested in it. I know you were able to get it for as cheap as $599, and I wish I would have took advantage of that at that time, but I didn't, uh, so I purchased it a little bit later on. I have an employee discount through my company with Samsung. I got about $60 off and then an additional uh, $50 off for trading in any phone. So apparently you could trade in any phone and get 50 bucks off. Or if you're trading in a phone with a cracked screen, you'll get $25 off. I kind of wish they would have done like 150 for the cracked screen. That might have made it worth your while, uh, but they haven't. So uh, I virtually got this phone for 600 and then you add the tax to it and it came out to about 660 uh, through Samsung. So without further ado, let's unbox this device. Not much on the back of it in terms of specs or anything. Kind of missed the days of Samsung where they would kind of, you know, advertise everything that comes with the device on the back or all the specs at least. So right here we have the phone. Okay, so uh, one of the things that Samsung took a lot of flack for was uh, other phones in this price point, other competitors uh, do have a glass black, glass back, but this is a plastic um, plastic back. I can't even talk today. This is a plastic back. Uh, I'm feeling it right now. It does feel, oh, it does feel very plastic. <laughs> it is a little hollow indentation in the middle here. I didn't expect that, but... Uh, again, for this price point to get a 5G phone, uh, this does have 120 hertz refresh rate. It does have the latest processor, the Snapdragon 865. And there's a couple things here that basically um, Samsung kind of dumbed down a little bit to obviously not complete with the, uh, the flagship S20 and things of that nature. Uh, display is 1080p as opposed to... Um, uh, some of their higher uh, higher displays, but you know this has 120 hertz refresh rate in regards to being snappy. Um, and I think we're gonna do a full head-to-head -head comparison between this and the uh, OnePlus 8T because that's its direct competitor. So real quick, let's take a, a quick hardware tour. Right here, you have your uh, front selfie camera, and a lot of people said if you can see that there. It's a little bit more pronounced and a little bit more distinct and it has like that a little bit of a silver ring around it. I, don't, I didn't know why they wanted to uh, accentuate it as much, but they decided to do so. You do still have an aluminum uh, chassis. So for those people that were concerned about bend tests and things of that nature, I haven't really seen a bend test yet uh, on this device and I'm not going to do a bend test, but uh, it still has an aluminum chassis. So that should make it pretty rigid. And I don't think this will break under bends uh, because the frame is not plastic. Only thing that's plastic is the back. It does feel, let me pull this off. It does feel very plasticky on the back. 
Um, it has, uh, some people say it has that matte glass uh, feel to it. It does not, it really does feel like plastic. If you want to get away from that plastic feel, either throw a case on it or um, get a skin. I think I'm going to skin this device. I haven't, I never really skinned a device before, but I think I might do that. I might do like a tear down skin for this device, so stay tuned for that as well. Over here you have your three camera setup over here. Uh, I don't really know the megapixels right off the top of my head. We'll get into that in the full review. But you do have a uh, main sensor, a wide angle, and I believe that's um, a depth sensor as well. Over here, and you have your single flash. Okay, let's see what we have. All right, uh, to the right of the device, you do have your volume rockers and your power button as well. So continuing on with that new Samsung trend of putting the volume and power on one side as opposed to having a uh, power button on the on the left and uh, the volume on the right, but um, that's something you get used to over time. On the bottom, you have your speaker grill, your USB-C cutout and a microphone, and the earpiece here also doubles as a speaker grill. So let's put on that first boot up, I think. Okay, so this device does not come with a screen protector pre-installed. I heard some people say it does, so I was kind of a little bit surprised that it doesn't have it, but oh well. Now, uh, something that I'd like to test out is that it has an optical fingerprint reader, in-display optical fingerprint reader, uh, where most of the other Samsung devices have that, um, uh, that other technology. Um, I don't want to call it, it's not 3D touch. Um, whatever, they have that other technology uh, that radar technology where as opposed to it being optical it, it could read your finger if it's dirty or whatnot whatever I think I prefer optical fingerprint readers I just find them to be more reliable and more faster than uh, Samsung's iterations of their fingerprint sensors uh, ever since uh, Samsung went with the ultrasonic that's what it's called ever since Samsung went with the ultra uh, ultrasonic fingerprint sensor I found that their fingerprint sensors are very unreliable uh, in the box this can charge up to 25 watt fast charging. However, in the box, you're getting a 15 watt charger, which is kind of a bummer. You know, you're paying close to $700. They should include a 25 watt fast charger. Let's see what else we have here. You have your USB-C to USB-A cable. So that's a little bit odd. So now, if you want to use your fast charger, if you have some other Galaxy devices, uh, you may need to use an adapter like, like this one here, which did not come in the box, but you may need to use your USB-C to USB-C adapter to use that fast charger. See anything else? Just some empty space here and nothing else in the box. All right, guys, that was the initial unboxing of the uh, Samsung S20 Fan Edition. I'm gonna put this phone through its paces. I'm gonna play with it for a few days. I'm gonna see if it's better than the OnePlus 8T, which I have right here. OnePlus 8T, sorry for the fingerprints. But anyway, so we have the OnePlus 8T head-to-head -head here with, well, the power is off. But anyway, we have the OnePlus 8T. We're gonna do a head-to-head -head matchup against the Samsung S20 Fan Edition. Now there are a lot of things that the uh, OnePlus 8T has that the Fan Edition doesn't, but there's a couple of things that the Fan Edition has um, OnePlus beat on that it, it depends on the person if it's, a, if, if it's a deal breaker for you. Now I'm hearing the camera system is a whole lot better on the Fan Edition than the OnePlus 8T. Uh, when you see my full review on the OnePlus 8T, you'll definitely see um, that I think that might be the case. But something that's really hitting me really hard that I really like the OnePlus 8T is that 65 watt fast charging, man. You could charge your phone in less than 30 minutes. Not to make this a complete comparison video, uh, but there's, there's a lot of things here that you really have to decide which way you want to go with and what's more important to you. Um, but anyway, we'll do the full review and uh, have that up on the channel shortly. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.